Hello, everyone. This is Mr. Minnick, and uh, I couldn't be more pleased to uh, to finally get started with this recording. Happy holidays to everyone. Um, one thing we do in my stats class is we check the holidays, and today it's got some interesting holidays. So, um, shout out to Mr. Wiley. So today we're going to look at the mean, the mean and standard deviation and we're not going to do a whole lot of writing today not nearly as much as we did in 5.1 the mean and the standard deviation of a discrete of a discrete random variable what we're going to do is we're going to look at a couple of formulas we're going to see how the calculator can make these calculations easier we're going to look at one example time permitting we'll go to math excel uh, and, and try to drudge through a couple of the exercises there. Uh, we have a question if I will do the exercises on a particular student's math Excel. Um, I think I might have to consult my, uh, my counselor, Randy, about that. So, so Randy, for the student who asks, will I do that particular student's math Excel homework? Should we do that? Should we log in as that student when the time is right? All right, well, there we go. So everybody's going to know who it is here in a few minutes. Uh, so 5.2, the mean and standard deviation. Okay, so if you remember, the mean was a mu, right? And um, the way it's calculated is, is this. Uh, you multiply, you multiply stuff. And then... Add those products. <laughs> I know that seems really uh, elementary, really crude, a really weird way. You might look at that procedure and say, you know what, Mr. Minnick, that doesn't make sense because normally with the mean, we add stuff and we divide by the total of the number of items, right? Well, when we're talking about the mean of a discrete random variable, we're going to have a category that says, what the possible value is, but then we're going to have another category that says with what frequency or what percentage or what's the likelihood of that happening. And to find the average, it's weird. We just take the stuff and we multiply it, and you'll see here in our first example. So the formula is really weird. We don't have to do any division. It's just multiplying and adding. Um, I just thought of something. I was thinking, this is, this is silly. Why don't we divide by anything? And then it hit me. Did it hit anybody else? Why we don't have to divide by anything? Why don't we have to divide anything? By anything. Let's think about what we're dealing with. We're dealing with discrete random variables. We're dealing with probabilities. Let me get this table from our example. Um, I'm not going to write out the big table that's that's in the book. I'm just going to write the, the condensed version. Um, so we're going to have a, a, a table here. Um, discrete random variable, and it deals with how many uh, customers um, somebody has at 1 p.m. I don't know. It's kind of weird. So here we go. The number of customers, X. Could be 0, could be 1, could be 2, could be 3, could be 4, could be 5, could be 6. So a phone operator, that's how many customers they could have at any given time. Imagine having six people on hold at once. I've had two people on hold at once. That's, that's tough enough. Um, so anyways, the probability, the probability that the random variable x equals x, here are the respective probabilities that you have nobody would be 2.9% or 0.029. That you have just one person would be 4.9%, so 0.049. Uh, mu equals, basically all I'm saying is you're going to multiply stuff and then add those products. Okay. You're just going to be multiplying stuff and add those products. Now the stuff, you asked what the stuff is. The stuff is going to be X multiplied by its probability. Okay. So if you want a formula, mu is actually calculated by the sum of X times its probability. So we're going to add up each of those products. Okay. 
Maybe we could even get it a little fancier with this. Make a subscript here. So the sum of the x sub i's multiplied by the p sub i's from i equals 1 to n. Okay. So we're going to be multiplying stuff and adding it up, and that's how we find the mean. Did anyone think of it yet? How come we don't have to divide? Strictly multiplication? No. There's one instance where dividing doesn't change anything. There's one instance where dividing doesn't change anything. If you divide by 1, what's the sum of the probabilities in a probability distribution? 1. So we would be dividing by 1, which doesn't change it, and that's why we don't have to divide. Okay? All right. Um, so anyway, somebody being a teller, chances are that there's a 7.8% chance that they're going to have four customers or th th uh, two customers at once. So 0 0.078. Zero, let me ch keep the same color. 0 0.078. That's a 7. Looks like a, I don't know what it looks like, but that's supposed to be a 7. Uh, then for 3, it's going to be 15 and a half, so 0 0.155. I said 0 0.155, and then 21.2, 0 0.212, and then for 5, it's going to be 26.2, 0 0.262, and then number 6 is 21.5, 0 0.215. I've actually worked in a call center before, um, not customer service, but in sales, and it's it's no no rare event to have five people in the queue for a call center. Um, I don't know if you've ever called a, a credit card company or a student loan company or somewhere and they said, your expected wait time is 10 minutes. And then they play the funky music with Phil Collins or something like that. Okay. So anyways, um, this, this is a, a reasonable model. Okay. So if we wanted to find the uh, the question is, why does it decrease when it gets to 6? Um, this particular instance, like I said, they're talking about some call center. What's the likelihood? What's the probability of having 6 callers? Okay, There's less of a likelihood that there's 6 callers than there are 5 callers. So what happened is, over the course of time, somebody who came up with this probability distribution, they monitored how many people are calling in at this particular time. Okay, And most of the people that usually there's about five people that are calling in more often than there's nobody calling in. Okay, And in fact, um, to be a little bit more specific about this, this is, you know, phone calls taken at 1 p.m. at some call center. Phone calls taken at 1 p.m. Okay, If you think about that, that's after lunch, right? So, um, you know, some people might take a late lunch, but... Um, yeah, around 1 p.m. 1 p.m. there would be a, a fair number of callers. So, so let's go ahead and calculate the mean then. So to calculate the mean, we said what we're going to do is we're going to multiply x times each probability, and then find the sum of that. Okay. So if we had to do this with our Samsung Galaxy or with our iPhone, um. You might want to have another another column here that's XP. Okay. Well, 0 times 0 0.029 is 0. And 1 times 0 0.049 is 0 0.049. And 2 times 0 0.078, that's, uh, let's see who's good at doubling stuff in there. Is that 156? 0 0.156. Okay, and then 155 tripled. Oh, uh, let's let's uh three times 0 0.155 is uh, 465. 0 0.465. 0 0.465. And then four times 0 0.212 should be 0 0.848. 0 0.848. Dang it, Bob Saget. Sorry. 0 0.848. And then 5 times 0 0.262, 5 times 0 0.262 is 1.31. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's right. What was, what was 4 times 0 0.212? 4 times 0 0.212. 
Yeah, 0 0.848. So we got 0 0.848 and then 1 point, what was that 1.31? And then what's the last one? 6 times 0.215 is 1.29. 1.29. Okay. So we want to know the average. This is how we calculate the average number of people calling into this call center at 1 o'clock. If you think about this, before we even get to the answer, let's just think about this. More people are calling. Uh, usually there's, there's closer to four or five or six people calling, right? So we expect the average to be maybe around four. Does that make sense? It's a weighted idea. If you think about how the numbers work, it's, it's a weighted idea. And four and five are weighted more heavily. Actually, four, five, and six are weighted more heavily than everything else. Does that make sense? Okay. So we expect it to be around that. So here we go. We have zero plus point zero four nine. I don't know about you, but this is a lot of stuff to enter. Um, plus point one five six plus point four six five plus point eight four eight plus 1.31 plus 1.29. So we get 4.118. So the average here is 4.118. Does that seem reasonable? We said 4, 5, and 6 are weighted more heavily. There is some weighting on the ones earlier, but answer seems reasonable, doesn't it? The question is, aren't I supposed to divide? In the formula, we said we multiply stuff and add them up. The total of the probabilities should equal 1, right? So we would be dividing by the total. We'd be dividing by 1, which doesn't change it. So we don't have to divide. No need to divide. That's it. That's it. We're ready to see how life can be so much easier with the Texas Instruments graphing something. Check this out. On my TI-84, I'm going to stat, edit, 0, 1, 2, 3, ah, 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 4, 5, 6. Do you guys remember the count from, from Sesame? Was that Sesame Street? I love the count. Whatever happened to the count? The count is so cool. The count's probably my favorite person from Sesame Street. I heard that there's no more Cookie Monster. Am I thinking, is that the same show? Oh, why do they have to do away with the Cookie Monster? There's, there's nothing wrong with cookies. Okay. So does everyone see what, uh, what all information I got going here? Hopefully if you're using your calculator and you're following along, you've got it now. If you're using an Inspire, um, we'll come to the Inspire in a second. What I want you to see is this. Not all that. <laughs> um, so back to the home screen, back to the home screen, there's a, a few buttons if you're using a TI-83 or 84 you really need to be familiar with. List mathematics. List mathematics. How do I get into list mathematics? List of mathematics. Any ideas? Anybody see the buttons I should press? How about second stat? How do I get to mathematics? I error over, and I error over again. And I want to add stuff up, right? So I want the sum. So check it out. Option five here is the sum. I can't type that into the TI-83 or 84. I have to access it that way or in the catalog. So the sum of list two, just to show you that all those probabilities added up, the sum of list two is one. Surprise, surprise. No, it's not a surprise. We knew it. We knew it should add up to one. Okay? So what we want to do, though, is this. We want to take the list math. We want the sum of list one multiplied by list two. Check this out. I feel like Vince from Slap Chop. I'm not going to say it, but watch how easy this is. Look at that. Right? Pretty easy, huh? That saved a lot of time. That's so much better than a Samsung Galaxy. Oh, yeah, well, I've got an app for that. Well, maybe you do if you do good. Okay? So let's go to the TI Inspire and see how we do this on the Inspire. On the Inspire, um, we need to go 
Home, new document. I said new document. And I want a list and spreadsheets page. Now remember with an Inspire, it's best if you label each column. So I'm going to go all the way up. Please don't ever put anything in these gray boxes here. Don't ever put anything in the gray boxes. But I'm going all the way up. I'm going to try to go all the way up to the top of the list. Yeah, it's a list and spreadsheets page. I'm going all the way up, and I'm going to call column A X, and I'm going to call column B P. Okay, so I labeled column A as X, column B as P. All right. So in column A, starting with cell one, I've got zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Starting in cell B1, I need to put my probabilities that correspond here, and my computer and my smart board and my everything else is fighting. So let's see if I can get this figured out here. If you enter things in the gray box, bad stuff happens. Don't put anything in the gray box. Don't put anything in the gray box. Oh, it didn't take my zero, did it? I've got to do this all over again. Zero. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, back over here. My uh, computer and my smart board don't like each other. I kind of like, uh, yeah, enemies. So we got 0 0.029, 0 0.029. 0 0.049, 0.3, what was next? 0 0.078, 0 0.078, uh, 0 0.155, 0 0.155, enter, 0.212, enter, 0 0.262, 0 0.262, enter, and 0.215, enter. Okay, everybody with me so far? So one thing to notice on the Inspire is at the top, you'll see a tab, and it's, the tab says 1.1. That means we're on the first problem uh, and the first page, page one, problem one. What I'm going to do on the Inspire now is I'm going to go doc, D-O-C, doc, not duck, duck, goose, doc, insert a calculator page. Now, if I don't have the data, in the list, this isn't going to work. So if you didn't put the data in the list and you're pressing the same stuff that I'm pressing and you say, it didn't work, well, it's because you didn't do what you needed to do. So on this calculator page, on this calculator page, I said, I said on this calculator page on my computer, there we go. On the calculator page, I'm going to take the sum of XP. Watch this on the Inspire. I'm just going to type in S U. Watch what happens when I put the M there. S-U-M. Oh, it went from italics to, to vertical. The sum of, parenthesis, parenthesis I said, parenthesis I said. Apparently nobody cares about Bigfoot. Oh, it's going to be a long day. It's going to be long. Day. The sum of, here we go, the sum of X, P. I probably should put X times P. The Inspire doesn't like it if, if you don't put the implicit multiplication in there. Um, so, X times P. X times P. Notice how X is bold. If your X isn't bold, it's because you didn't put the stuff in the list. And then P. And then enter. And then there it is. Everybody all right? Okay. Uh, if I tried putting an uppercase label on the list yesterday, and it changed it back to lowercase. So, yeah. Good question about the uppercase, lowercase. Okay. Every time I touch my smart board, it says, nope. 
Nope, not happening. So I got to walk back over to my laptop. No big deal. I need the exercise. Everybody okay so far? We got the mean? So here's the thing that comes up in statistics. It's as if my smart board all of a sudden says, you know, we're not going to do anything now. My smart board is done. So here we go. All right, wow, writing something doesn't even work. So while I have these technical difficulties and I'm trying to get my smart board reset, um, I think the video will still go. Uh, does anyone have any shout outs? Dan gets a shout out. Who else? Not, not Brittany gets a shout out. Anybody else? No, Trevor. Trevor, uh, Evan's thinking about you. Mama Jean. Mom Jeans. Okay. The future Mr. Minnick, he appreciates that. Everybody that doesn't hate Dan. Everybody that hates Dan, too. Okay. Shout out to Caitlin Gillis. Okay. Connection wizard. Let's see if this does anything. Hey, it detected the device. Next. 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 Connection wizard, did you work? All right. Wait a minute. Maybe Randy had it right the first time. I wonder if the recorder even is still active. Oh, it's still recording. Well, we got to get through this one way or the other. So maybe I'll just have to sit down at the desk and type. That's okay. I could type. Am I going to draw? No. Okay, so the standard deviation. The standard deviation. The formula for this is horrid. Can I say that? H-O-R-R-I-D, horrid. It's not pleasant, not fun. Um... What you're going to do is you're going to take a square root. So let me see if I could do this with the pens. I honestly have no idea why the smart board's being as, as bad as it is right now. So we're going to take the square root of, you like my, you like my mad skills there? We're going to take the square root of the sum of the X. Oh, I could. I forgot about my uh, my slate. Let me try the slate. The slate's probably not going to work either, but we'll try it. Okay, standard deviation. Uh, going to be the square root of. The sum of the x squared times the p minus mu 
squared. What? Say what? Yeah, say what? Say what? Say what? Wow. So if we think about it this way, it's the square root of the sum of the x squared p's minus, yeah, that's a mu sign, minus, now mu was the sum, mu was the sum of the uh, x p's, the quantity squared, right? What? I am so glad we get to use the Inspire on this. So, let's see. Two different ways of writing the same same formula. Same same idea, just a couple different ways of representing it. Yeah. So let's go back to this page. And let's have a, a column for x squared. I can't believe that it's not butter. I can understand why today's holiday is what it is. So here's x squared. We got 0, we got 1, we got 4, we got 9, and 16, and 25, and 36, right? So that formula said what we've got to do is not fun. It said we've got to take 0 times 0 0.029 plus 1 times 0.049. I said 0.049 and it didn't take that. Plus, we got to go all the way through. Plus 4 times 0.078. You're about to hear me scream louder than I've ever screamed when this works. Plus 9 times 0.155 plus Point one six, no, plus sixteen times point two one two. We're going to use a calculator to make this so much easier. So when you're doing the homework on tomorrow in class and you're out there with your Samsung Galaxy or your iPhone and you say, "Can you help me with this?" No, I'm not going to help you with this. When I say get a real calculator, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm telling you, real calculators exist because they're designed for calculating. Well, there's an app on my phone. I don't care. Uh, the 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 list on the on the calculators are going to make this so much easier. So, plus 36 times 0.215. Now, before I press enter, I want to make sure I got everything right. So, because remember, this is just adding all that stuff up, and then i got to subtract my answer from the other part, right? Um, okay, so let's go ahead and press Enter. So what i got to do is subtract from that 4.118 squared. 4.1, I said 4 point. 4.118 squared. And then what i got to do with that is take the square root of that. Wow! So 1.57 is what we're after, okay? 1.57. Sigma. 1.57. And you could round. You all know how to round, right? Well, let's try this on the Inspire a faster way. The square root of a lot of stuff. Under square root, I need list math. We're going to do it on the Inspire. So under the square root, I want uh, list math. I want the sum. So I want list math, I want the sum of list 1 squared, I said list 1 squared, times list 2, close that, minus parenthesis, list math, the sum of list 1, I said list 1, times list 2, that quantity, squared, close my parenthesis. Ah! Ah! It worked! It worked! It 
it's alive. Okay, so on an Inspire, here's the cool thing about an Inspire. Watch this. We go the square root. That wasn't the loudest I've ever screamed, by the way, for the record. The sum of, and I just type in sum, uh, the sum of, we want list, no, it's not list, it's x, right? x squared times p, I said x squared, times p. Um, then we subtract the sum, and I'm going to put this in parentheses, so we subtract the sum, the sum of x times p, and I'm going to close that, and I'm going to square that sum, and here's where I love the Inspire, okay? What I'm going to do now, and this is so cool, if you have your own Inspire, <laughs> file, file, save as. Oh, I could save this, and I could use it later. Oh, 5.2 stats. Thank you, Mr. Minnick. Thanks. 5.2 stats, thanks. So I've got that saved. So if you didn't save it, well, I can hook you up with that file, and all you got to do then is change these numbers, and then that's that. So we're going to quickly, he says quickly, he says laughingly, we're going to have somebody come on down and uh, log in, and we'll try to do a couple of exercises in the time that's left. While that person's logging in, we got time for shout-outs. Today we give shout outs to Sips and to Trevor. Evan's thinking about you. Anybody else? Fred? Mr. Dependable. Uh, 5.2. So we're going to go homework and tests. So Nate Benson's volunteered to log in for us. We're going to do a couple exercises for Nate. And we'll just show you how easy this is using a real calculator. Would the real calculator please stand up? Please stand up. So here we go. Question one. So I'm going to have to make a few changes here on my Inspire. No big deal. Um, okay. Um, I love changing gears like that. It's so fun. So here we go. We got two. Does that go all the way up to seven? Two through eight. So here we go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I feel like I'm in dance. Well, they would start with five, though. No offense to any dancers. I just don't get the counting. Point zero two four. I don't get counting in music either sometimes, but that's another story, too. Point two nine eight. Point two four seven. Point two oh seven. And the last one that's hidden is point oh four eight. Point oh four eight. Eight. So the great thing is, I have this file saved. I'm going to go to 1.2 tab, and I'm just going to copy and paste. I'm going to copy that entry. Bam. 5.391. Check it out. 5.391. <laughs> Look at that. Now, you might want to make note of this. As the number of observations increases, as the number of observations increases, the mean will get closer the mean of the observations will approach the mean of the random variable. As the number of observations increases, the mean blah, 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 blah. Check answer. Got that one. There's this thing called the law of uh, large numbers. Uh, the more times something happens over and over again, the more um, close the predicted value is. So anyway, here we go. We copy and paste. We get 1.5. Let's see. They want three decimal places on this. 1.545, I think. 1.545. Bam, look at that. Now all we need to do is make a histogram. If we look at the probabilities, it's really small, it's smaller, it's smaller, and then it gets huge. So it's really small, and then it's smaller, and then it's smaller, and then it gets huge. I think it's A. Bam, there it is. We got the idea? 
Any questions, comments, concerns? Well, I need somebody who owns their Inspire. If they didn't get that, well, whether they got it saved or not, I can hook them up with that file. Um, do you have it saved? Come on down, plug into my cable, and I'll just show you how quick this is to send this document. So we'll plug the Inspire into this. And all I have to do from the Inspire, once it recognizes this, is I'm going to go into uh, my, was it my documents? Uh, wasn't it stats 5.2 or something like that? I hope I can find it. Just love my computer. 5.2 stats. Where are you at? Five point two stats, where you at? File. Oh, cancel. Um home, home, doc, file. Should be able to send it. Let me save this somewhere where I know where it's at. Save as my documents algebra two, even though it's not algebra two. My documents algebra two, that's the wrong place. <laughs> Oh, come on. TI Inspire, where are you at? Documents and settings. Users. My documents. TI stuff. TI Inspire. Algebra 2, there we go. Here it is, 5.2 stats, thanks. I drag it and you got it. There it is, that fast. It's been real, it's been fun. I hope it's been real fun. Hope everybody has a great day. Thank you for being uh, a great audience and a great class. Good.